From the creators of the Wife Wednesday Radio Network and Lead Up Studios, this is Nerd Questing with Cena. Once upon a time in a podcast far, far away, there was a lady who talked a lot about nerdy subjects, and that lady is me. Salutations. I'm Cena from the Wife Wednesday Radio Network, and this is a quest deep into my mind. Hey, listeners. Some of you may know me from the Wife Wednesday Radio Network, but for those of you who don't, hi, I'm Sina, and I am today's lady and hostess. Welcome to my nerdy private show. Welcome to the first episode of Nerd Questing with Sina. So I'm Sina, clearly, and um, I just wanted to explain just a little bit of the idea I've had for this show. So I am a massive nerd. I love heavy fantasy books and movies, and I have always loved creative writing and making stories. And ever since I was little, I have always enjoyed, you know, we'll call it what it is. I have always enjoyed playing pretend. I have always wanted to build whole worlds in my imagination and have my friends be a part of it. Um This started with, you know, playing Barbies and I would play Beanie Babies with my sister and we'd always play Barbies and animals and we had all kinds of adventures. And then as I grew up, I met other friends and um, I got into creative writing as a way and a form of self-expression that's a little more age appropriate. And then I think everyone who has been a writer or creative pursuits in some sort of way, you've reached a point where you get writer's block or you become daunted by projects. And I was that way. And then real life just seemed to get in the way. And I felt like I lost that creative part of me that I always prided myself on. And then I got introduced into a whole new world. This world being Dungeons and Dragons. Now, before you click off this podcast, just know, yes, I understand how nerdy it is, but I think anyone who's listening and has never done it before, you underestimate how incredibly wholesome, hilarious, team building, relationship building, um, just even pleasant being involved in a Dungeons and Dragons group could be. And this isn't just going to be a Dungeons and Dragons podcast, but at the moment, that's what I've poured my creative energy into other than this podcast. And let's be honest, I am definitely edited by the team at Lead Up Studios and by the one, the only daddy, Dustin. And I figured the first episode, I just want to talk about my introduction into that world And then as a person who actually DMs and writes their own stories and makes all their friends and family go through this world with her, um, I wanted to talk to you guys on what a first Dungeons and Dragons session might look like and what the prep for that might look like. So without further ado, when I was younger and my brother was married at that time to his ex-wife now, um, he brought this game home and was like, mom, dad, Tree, Cena, everybody, let's get in on this. I'm going to help you guys. And it was kind of like a crash course. But um, he was like, we're going to make characters and we're going to play in the world of the Lord of the Rings so you guys understand. So Middle Earth. And um, we all made these characters and we were just kind of trying to learn this Dungeons and Dragons system with my brother and it was fun but I can't say that we all really understood what was going on and this was probably a decade ago now flash forward it's been about a decade and they've come out with a new system and this system I think is much more simplified for Dungeons and Dragons and I currently play on the Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition and really I think that's the kind of game that as long as you have a knowledgeable DM you are going to be able to get uh, 
really anyone into it. In fact, over my birthday weekend, July 2nd, I had um, a huge group and I had my dear friend, Sean and Lindsay, who happens to be my best friend's uncle and uncle's girlfriend, join my session. And I really just made them a short sheet and I hope they had fun. It's definitely overwhelming, but you know, you just sort of throw people in if you can, and you just hope that people have a good time. So I started years ago, like I said, and then last year I was invited to join another campaign that my husband's uncle was in. And I was hesitant at first, but I was like, you know what? I think I really want to get into this. And then I did. And I started going every other week for probably six months. And it was amazing. I loved it. I loved the friendships you make, the characters you get to make. There's just your imagination is the limit. So literally the sky's the limit. Anything can happen. You can make anything happen. You can talk to you a DM and really incorporate whatever story you want. And um, like I said, I became addicted. And as that group kind of fell apart, I joined uh, another group that my brother had started. And then I made my own group. And then I joined another group. And now it's just kind of my life. I I can't say it's kind of my life. Um, I don't spend every waking moment thinking about it, but I definitely spend a lot of time building this world that I'm sharing with my friends and family now. And I just wanted to talk briefly now about what a first session might look like. So when I set up my new session that I am the dungeon mistress for, and all of my people call me daddy. It's great. There's now two daddies. Um, The first thing I did is I sent everyone a introduction to what our story was going to be. And um, I made a discord. I was super nerdy about this. And I just wanted to briefly maybe read what my players, the only thing my players knew going into this. In the kingdom of Alaria, shadow is befalling the land once called the kingdom of many lights. King Iaros was not even dead in the ground before his son, Prince Henry, started making his demands for the crown. As successor to the throne, the council arranged for his coronation. He was never a crowd favorite, though. In court, he was known to be cold and heartless, and he pushed for only that which would benefit the few and not the many. His ties to the Cretian Empire, a large empire known for foreign invasion and unruly and shadow practices. Within the last few months since his rise to power, the now King of Alaria, His Majesty King Henry, is ruler of the nation with an iron fist. Already envoys from the Cretian Empire have been seen coming and going from the seat of Alaria the, and its capital, Eldith Falls. The Kingdom of Alaria has long been a voice of reason among the nations. Eldith, the goddess of peace, even made herself known to the world in the throne room of the castle in ages past. Behind the throne of the king, a waterfall flows from an underground spring. The goddess promised that as long as the waters flow freely, their kingdom shall know peace and hold her blessing." The free-flowing waters ran in rivets throughout the palace and out to the city of Eldith Falls, giving all fresh drinkable water. The temple of Eldith sits across from the palace with a large pool before it, continuously filled with the gift of the goddess. Alarmingly, though, the water's flow is lessening. The priests and priestess of Eldith are taking to the streets warning of the end. Princess Ira sister of the king is a devout follower of the goddess Eldith, known for her visions once of which she had foretold the death of her father of the late king Iaros. Visions have plagued her since his death, foretelling 
the end of the goddess's blessing and the darkness befalling her kingdom. Her brother's eyes and ears are all over the palace, and it has been made quite clear that the only reason she is alive is that she is still beneficial to him later. He wishes to harness her visions for his own good and use her as a tool to marry off to extend his reach. The princess trusts no one but her own champion knight, Phelan, and her court wizard, Eric. She and her knight assemble a team to help her gather the artifacts used to summon the goddess herself to fight back the shadows and bring balance to the land. The party of adventurers may be unorthodox, but, and a dramatic dot dot dot, she will have to trust the goddess is guiding and watching over her peoples. So that is all my um, players got to know. And my game started off with four players, that being my best friend and love of my life, Nicole, my husband and also love of my life, Andrew, my sister, Therese, and my mother, Gladys, all of which picked amazing characters. I asked each and every one of them alone because I helped them make their characters what they would want. And so my sister wanted to be the court wizard, Eric. And um, so we set up a little bit of a backstory for him. My sister's a little more knowledgeable. So she, in Dungeons and Dragons, I should say, um, she built her own character. But then we had a session together where we talked about um, if she had hopes or aspirations of what she wanted her character to achieve in the end. And I can't tell too many spoilers, but as a seventh son of a seventh son, he might have something to prove. Now, my husband's character is Aluvia. He picked a, a Ladrin elf and he's a female, so that's kind of fun. Like referring to my husband as a girl is kind of funny sometimes. But um, he's actually really been getting into it, and I'm not. Sh- he hasn't really given me much of what he wants out of it, other than being involved and learning to play. And I think character-wise, he's starting to learn how to develop and act as his character and uh, learn to read character sheets. And so that's been really cool. Now, my mother is also a huge nerd, and she chose to be a male dragonborn, all copper-colored and gorgeous, named Hrothgar. And Hrothgar may have a sordid past as a paladin, something about oath breaking, or I don't know, there's spoilers to come. Regardless, oh yes, my players were also given the option to follow the princess willingly, to do this for money, or owe the princess a favor. And let's just say that Hrothgar owes Princess Ira a life favor. Now, finally, and not last but least, but my wife, Nicole, she is playing a half-orc barbarian, and she is a red-haired, gorgeous beauty named Lilith, Lilith the Enraged, to be exact. And she's also, this is her first foray into Dungeons and Dragons. And so she's learning and she's starting to get into the actual role play aspect of what would her character want to do and interacting, even though she's withdrawn and she's like watching everything. Um, It's just really neat to see all of my friends and loved ones start experiencing more Um, out of it. And if that wasn't enough, then my brother got invited to the group because I was like, you know what? He kind of invited himself, but still, anyone who knows my brother, Adric, knows that he is loud, but he's funny. And so Adric comes in as Ignatius the Insufferable, Iggy for short. He is our bard and I let him have a musical number coming in and it was hilarious. And then my husband did the growling for it because he's a a bard that's introducing heavy metal into this world that doesn't have it. Um, And then last but not least may have another person joining. However, my friend Mike joined, which is actually my brother's friend. I met him. Um, 
And he came in as a loxodon, which is a large elephant man. He is a paladin, I believe, as well. And he goes by the name of Prince Odo Savage. And when I first learned that, I laughed so hard. So listen, I don't even know Mike's real last name. They keep telling it to me. I have no memory of it. And so I made his name in my phone, Mike Savage. And I know who it is every time I get text messages. Um And this game is really turning into something more than I had expected it. You know, I was like, all right, these guys are going to go on an adventure. They're going to go gather these artifacts and it'll be whatever. Um, There is so much more life to this that it just blows my mind. It blows my expectation. And the fact that all of these people want to be involved in what I'm building and they look forward to it is just, it's mind blowing. It's so fun. It combines everything that I love about creativity and creative works like writing, drawing even. And then it reflects it back, brings it back to, I can share it with my friends and family. And it's not as daunting of a task as sitting down and writing a whole novel, which I hope to talk about at some point as well in this podcast, because I've written three full-length novels, never published, never will see the light of day. They are awful, but I still have written them. And I'm really hoping to be able to interview the one, the only, my dear, dear side bit BFF for life, Shauna, who is a prolific writer, even though she's not published yet. She has more books under her belt than I do years on this earth, if that makes sense. And I'm 31. She is a creative writing genius. And honestly, she was part of my inspiration to start writing novels, which then led me into Dungeons and Dragons. So I know this episode is a shorter episode, and I just wanted to give really a brief introduction on what I think is going to be happening with it. Um, Like I said, we went through, I explained all about what Uh, first session with Dungeons and Dragons might look like, how I got into it, and what's inspiring and what continues to inspire me. And really, it's just been the feedback from my friends and family and sitting down for a couple hours together with them. And we always eat food and we always have spirits of whatever nature. And um, it's just such a good time And it is so interactive and socially fulfilling that now that this is a part of my life, I can't even imagine what it was like without that. Like, there's just so much enrichment I get from sharing a passion with my friends and loved ones. So if you made it all the way through, thank you so much for listening. I am Sina. I talk entirely too much about nerdy things. And until next time, stay magical. You've been listening to NerdQuest, a Wife Wednesday Radio Network production. Our executive producer is Dustin from the Lead Up Studios team in St. Louis, Missouri. Be sure to like, follow, and share us with your friends on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and more by searching Wife Wednesday. You can find NerdQuesting on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and more.